The world is always talking about the law of attraction. Uh, if you say this, you attract this. If you do this, you attract that. If you sleep like this, you attract that. <laughs> but in reality, they have misunderstood the law of attraction because it is wishful thinking they call the law of attraction. But in reality, that is not the law of attraction. By the Spirit of God, I will teach you about the law of attraction. Amen. Because it is a real thing. It exists. But it is not what you're thinking. Let's start with love. Love is not because there is any emotional content. Love is simply a decision. Love is a decision. Love has nothing to do with affection. Even though affection can help you in loving somebody. But affection can die. But it can be rekindled. But love is simply a decision. A lot of relationships die because people are seeking affection. They don't understand that love is a commitment. Love is purely commitment. Love is devotion that I have found a partner that I am going to build a life with. If I was sick today and I couldn't move, is the person I'm with going to wheel me around, clean me, take care of me, look after me, hold my hand even when I am departing? That is love. This is why the Bible says, for God so loved the world. God loved the world despite the sins of men. Jesus died for the world even though others will not receive him. That's why he says, to as many as believed on him, not everybody will believe in him. But he still made that sacrifice available. Why? Because God made a commitment to his creation. That even though you depart from me, I will cleanse you and I will bring you back unto myself. So a lot of people don't understand that love is a decision. Love is a pure decision. That's why uh, uh, love that has no actions is not love. Love without giving is not love. To love is to give, to give your time, to give yourself, and even to give your resources. That is what love truly is. It is a commitment to sacrifice yourself. So a lot of uh, relationships die because the affection can die. But love can remain. You can fight and love each other. You can bump heads and love each other. Ah, when we were growing up, me and my brothers, ah, if you saw us at it, you think that these people will never talk. Two minutes later, I was up, you want to go? <laughs> it is over. <laughs> it is finished. So love is what? A decision. Affection is the ability to focus and some, on something and to build an attachment to it. Is somebody listening to this? You can build your affection on your car. Such a new car. I love this car. You clean it. You do. Your car becomes something that you value so much. Your affection is on it. But something else can show up. That can steal your affection. And it is no longer your car. It is your jet. Uh, see, I'm checking if you're here. Amen. <laughs> Your affection can shift. Is somebody listening to me? Your affection can shift. Oh, I love this. Like, you know, one thing that God helped me to do is that I never give things I don't love. If I love something and somebody tells me, oh, I'm just praying, Father, let them not ask. <laughs> In the name of Jesus, let them know that. Because if they ask me, it's gone. Because I consistently keep my heart pure by giving what I love the most. Not keeping what I love the most. By giving it. Are, are you getting what I'm saying? That's good. That way your hands are always ready to receive bigger and better. Amen. If you're not good. clapping, you're stingy. That's good. <laughs> we are checking you. <laughs> So affection 
can be shifted, can move. Are, are you getting what I'm saying? And affection can be spiced up, but affection has the, it is in your ability to move your focus on something, encounter it every day, and before you know it, your affection is set on that. This is why the Bible says, set your affection on the things where? Above. Meaning that you can change where your affection will be. You can move it. Is this making sense? Yes. So affection is different from love. But people mix love and affection. You need both of them sometimes. But if you see the bigger picture, where you will love, you will commit, your affection will also follow. I feel like, let me stay on this side. I feel like these guys are just looking at me. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, lust is dangerous because, but lust in itself, it is, it is something that consumes. It's not necessarily negative because the Bible both uses it negatively and positively. So it can't be just negative, but it is also positive. But mainly, it is more negative than it is positive. Why? Lust seeks to satisfy itself. Your stomach lusts after food. It desires food. But when you become, when you become lustful after food, you enter into what we call gluttony. Uh, uh, I feel like I'm talking. Are you sure you're here? Yes. Yeah, we're here. Some people are binding McDonald's right now, Father. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So, it can turn into gluttony. Why? Because, remember, the world fell because of the lust of the eyes. Satan comes to Eve and says, ah, you know, what did God tell you about the tree? She said, ah, you know, he said we could eat any tree, but not this one. Then he tells her, ah, but you know, if you eat this, you become like God. Then she said, hmm, really? Yeah, that's not why he doesn't want you to eat it. The Bible says the next thing. She wasn't mesmerized about being like God. The Bible says she looked at the fruit and it was good. She was... This looks like if I uh, crunch, <laughs> the fruit will be deep. Imagine we fell because somebody was seduced. <laughs> but just let me just feel how my tongue will, my test buds will fire up. <laughs> Look how silly that is. So your mouth, your lust can get you in danger. But when it comes to relationships, it's... Love, uh, lust takes. You can be lustful and you're in a marriage. You can be lustful and you're in a relationship. If your goal is to just satisfy yourself because love gives. So if it is just about what you want, how it will be like, and if they don't fulfill it, you don't want, you don't have love. You have lust. That's so good. <laughs> okay, let's change the message. God shall bless you. <laughs> Trust me, we are going somewhere. Amen. Is this making sense? Yes. It is good to know these things because what I'm about to share with you, it is necessary for you to be able to tell the difference. Amen. I mean, I can keep going, but let me, let me go to the main thing that I want to tell you. Attraction is different because attraction has nothing to do with you attraction is not because you want it attraction is your spirit and your soul be in, being invoked even against your will There is no powerful force that God has ever created more than attraction. Wow. 
Seduction is when I entice you to provoke a weakness in you in order for me to manipulate you. That is what seducing is. Seducing is, you know, you, you cut work a little bit. And somebody looks, Shanda Baba Baba. Kata. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of. <laughs> Father, I cover my eyes in the blood. In the blood. Blind me, O oh Lord. Let me be like Samson for this hour. <laughs> Seduction is not only sexually, but it's in different ways. Is this making sense so far? Yes. The devil can seduce you because seduction is hypnotizing you to be like a zombie for a moment where you don't see anything. You're just... Is, is somebody getting this? That is what seduction is. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. So you can be seduced, but that one you can fight. You can resist because of certain things. Weakness is provoked by temptation. If there is no temptation, no weakness will be revealed. Are, are you listening to me? If there is no temptation, there is no weakness that will be revealed. Let me be honest with you. A lot of you think you are more righteous than others. A lot of you think you are more righteous than others because you have not been put in an opportunity to sin. Amen. So good. Some of you are not listening to me. Many of you think you are better than others. Because you have not been tempted yet. Your location, you see, temptation has a setting. Jesus could not be tempted in the city. God removed him and sent him into the wilderness. Where he will be most vulnerable to see if there is any evil inside of him. When Jesus came out of the wilderness... He would always tell his disciples, pray that you are not led into temptation. Because if you go now, you're not coming back. Were the disciples tempted? Yes. After the Lord was taken, 100%. Because it's part of our purification process. It is part of our sanctification process. You never suppress weaknesses. Some of you try to control these things. No, you can't. You don't have the power to do so. And the Holy Spirit does not come to make you control it. The Holy Spirit comes to reveal it so that it comes out of you. Amen, amen. amen. Uh, I feel like I thought I was delivering somebody. Some people don't want deliverance. Are you, are you getting what I'm saying? Yes. You need a setting to tempt you. Ah, oh, it's deep. Imagine God is, you know, that was what proved that Jesus was a worthy sacrifice, right? Not only because he was the son of God, but you are tempted. The Bible says you are tempted by your own evil desires. Because we are fallen in nature, there are things inside of us that are not good. That it is not a demon. <laughs> you can't rebuke the soul. I bind my soul. Huh? The mighty name of mm -mm. You can't do that. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That is it not true. It's a hundred percent true. Mm. It's a million percent true. I love what he said. Right on. <laughs> <laughs> yep, yep, yep. <laughs> it's deep. Now, now capture this. We're going somewhere. We're getting close. But attraction is the most powerful force out of everything that I've mentioned because attraction has nothing to do with you. It is given at certain times, but many times it is misused. 
because we are not spiritually uh, uh, um, seasoned, we are not spiritually uh, uh, um, uh, uh, built up in order to properly discern what the attraction is. Attraction is so powerful because it is a pulling to where your destiny is connected to. Amen. Amen. Let me go deep into it. Can I go deeper? The devil fell because of attraction. Let me explain to you. Every cherubim, the devil comes from a group of angels called cherubims. If it is singular, it is chirab. They are not little babies flying with the arrows. No. It is not that. If you know the nature and the purpose of cherubims is to be guardians and carriers of the presence of God. They are those who work and service the throne of God. The presence of God literally sits on them. They are literally the throne of God himself. Whenever you hear the throne of God, it is talking about cherubims. The Bible says, O oh Lord God Almighty, the God enthroned between the cherubims. This is why on the mercy seat, there are two angels, specifically cherubims. Their wings are touching each other and that place is called the mercy seat. So the devil, Satan, or what scripture calls Lucifer, was already anointed for the purpose of serving the throne. But his time and preparation had not come yet. But the Bible declares that he was anointed. To be anointed means to be set apart for a certain work. But the Bible says something funny. It says, he began to think into himself because pride entered him. It corrupted the purpose of the attraction. Because every cherubim is attracted to the throne of God. He began to speak of himself. I will lift up my throne above the clouds, above the stars. And I will be like, he did not say I will replace him. He did not say I will fight him. He did not say I will go against God. He simply said, I will lift up my throne and I will be like him. The process and the purpose was faulty because he misunderstood the affection. Teaching good. This is good. I feel like you're not getting what I'm trying to say. It was a pull beyond him. Before him, there was nobody. Before him, there was nobody. People went up and down to the throne, but he had not ascended yet. That is why the Bible calls him Lucifer, son of what? The morning. Lucifer, son of what? The morning. morning. Jesus is called what? The morning star. Meaning this one was assigned to serve the morning star. Wow. Wow. You are missing it. I feel like I'm talking to myself. This is good. I'm trying to take you into the spiritual world and come into the realm of men. It was a prophetic thing. He was attracted to the throne because his destiny was supposed to be where the throne is. Yes. But because the heart was wrong, because of pride, it became about him. It, it was no longer about destiny. He never even acted on it. He was kicked out of heaven. If you read Genesis chapter 6, you see another group of angels called watchers. Now the purpose of watchers was to watch over the affairs of men and not interfere, but to guide mankind without directly interfering with them. 
They could appear to you like Ezekiel saw them, Daniel saw them. They could appear to you, give you guidance, and they are gone. But they were not to interfere in the growth and the evolving of men. Are you getting what I'm saying? But in Genesis chapter 6, it says something funny, and I'm going quickly because of time. It says this, it says, And the sons of God saw that the daughters of men were beautiful. They saw something and there was an attraction beyond what they could understand. It was enough for them to leave heaven and to come on earth. Come on, come on, teaching so good. I feel like I'm talking to the wrong people. Now, if, if you have to understand that there are different classes of angels, different kinds of angels and, 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 different realms that angels come from now specifically the watchers this is maybe your pastor didn't know but let me help you to know no i'm being serious i'm not i'm not hating on anybody i'm just being honest because if somebody asks you why isn't the devil having children today how are you going to answer them so this will help you to understand if you look even in in daniel it makes a distinction if you look at Ezekiel, it makes a distinction between holy ones and watchers. Holy ones and watchers. Watchers are angelic beings also. But they are different from holy ones. Holy ones were created from light. Their substance is light. Watchers, their substance is celestial bodies. So they were created from another world, just like we were created from this earth. They were created from another substance. How do we know? They have sperm. So if they go into a human, they can conceive, even though the child will be an abomination. But nevertheless, they can conceive. That is where the Goliaths and them came from. It was the mixing of their DNA and human DNA. But the holy ones come from the heaven where throne, the throne of God is. This is why Jesus said it like this. He said, in heaven, you will be like the angels, neither given to marriage, neither marrying. But the watchers used a very interesting statement. They saw that the daughters of men Meaning they have their own daughters. Uh, I'm, I'm talking to... Let me find somewhere where somebody wants to hear the truth. How can you compare what you have never seen? If men are the first ones to have daughters, why would you say, and they saw that the daughters of men, so they are daughters of watchers also. Are you getting this? Yes. But there was an attraction. And they were attracted to their assignment. But in a negative way. Mm. I'll say that one more time. They were attracted where the assignment was. But in a completely negative mm. way. Samson is coming from a place called Timna, minding his own business. Everybody's afraid of him. You mess with him, he beats you up. So he's walking through enemy territory. He sees something and says, ah! The first thing is he's so pulled. He goes to his parents and says, hey guys, I saw something. He doesn't say he was seduced. He doesn't say anything like that. He just was pulled. And he went to his father and mother and said, listen, I have found somebody. I need you guys to marry her for me. It means that Samson was not a fornicator. He was not somebody after last. They lied to you about Samson. Wow. If he was pulled to the point he could not understand, his first thought is like, listen, I need to marry this person and be done. It tells you that inside of him there was no lust. Yeah. So good. That's good. Uh, some of you are not listening. That's good. I wish you would really listen genuinely. 
And this is when you read from the time he was conceived, this is when he's mature, now he's living his life. They say, ah, he goes to his parents and says, ah, I need you to marry for me this woman. I saw her among the Philistines. The father and mother said, you, don't you know the law of God? Nobody is supposed to be attracted to billions. Nobody is supposed to be attracted to mansions. Come on. Nobody is supposed to be attracted to elevation. Come on. No one in our family is supposed to be attracted to success. Right. Nobody is supposed to be attracted to open doors. Yes. You are just supposed to be local like all of us. Why are you trying to yes. go somewhere yes. where nobody in our family has ever yes. been? Yes. I am prophesying to somebody. Yes. That there is something that is about to pull you. I receive yes. it. Ah. Amen. Amen. I'll sit for two seconds. Sit, 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 sit. Sit, sit for two seconds. If you're here, wave your hands, please. Wave your hands. Ah, these three are just looking at me. Wave your hands, please. <laughs> the second one is just smiling. Wave your what about mom? Wave, wave your hands if you can hear me. We, can you hear me? Wave your hands. Okay, thank you. <laughs> I'm joking. I play too much. Forgive me. <laughs> but, but, but listen, listen to this. Samson is pulled. He doesn't understand. He goes to his parents and says, listen. I don't know. They said, is there no daughters amongst our brethren? Even from my family that... You can marry because God gave them a law. He said, uh, until you are settled in your land, you should never marry outside your people because they will bring other gods. Remember, this is what Solomon did and brought a bunch of gods into their country because he had several concubines and wives put together. And they brought other gods into the nation. So God was not into them doing that ever. So Moses spoke to them and said, listen, you will marry among your brethren. If they are not Ronit and, and Michelle, you are not allowed to marry. Keep it, keep it kosher, <laughs> Jewish. <laughs> That's what God told them. No, seriously. So here comes God again, doing something to Samson's heart, who is anointed, born for the purpose of defending the Jews. God does something into his heart. of a sudden my guy is pulled to the enemy and his father and mother said no we need to take you to revelation church for deliverance amen you have problems samson amen you have to understand that when the father and mother said why do you want to marry a daughter of the uncircumcised you have to know what that means it means it meant that they are not covenant people they are not a chosen people. How can you choose somebody from the curse they rejected from God? This is what they said to him. And Samson made a deep confession. He said, I don't know why. She just pleases me. He did not have a conversation with her. He did not hug her. It was not even a holy hug, the Christian one. Where... <laughs> Church hugger. <laughs> there was nothing like that at all. Nada, zero. He said, I don't know why. She just pleases me well. I can't explain it. The next verse says very interesting thing. He said, the father and mother knew not. It was the Lord's doing. It was not up to Samson. It was not up to his mother. It was not up to generational curses. It was not about family ties or family limitations. Amen. There is something that God is brewing inside of you. Amen. There is something that God is provoking within you. Yes. 
to take you from where you are amen, amen. and to plant you in the midst of what God yes. has called you to do. Yes. I will see. Amen. Uh, I wish somebody could hear me. Yeah. Yeah. I sit, sit for two seconds. I'm about to be done. I'm about to be done. Are you here? Yes. yes. The issue is, let's read this scripture. Let's read this so that we can, because of time, let's read this. Let's go to uh, 1 Peter chapter 3 and verse 3. 1 Peter 3, 3. 1 Peter 3, 3. Listen to what it says. Whose adorning, let it not be that outward adorning of plating the hair and of wearing gold or putting on of apparel. Notice what Peter is saying here. You know, some, some foolish people, they have perverted this verse because they don't understand what the verse is saying. So they have used this to say, women should not wear jewels. You should not wear gold, man. Wear sackcloths. <laughs> It is pleasing unto God. No, that's not what the Bible is saying. He's saying, let your adorning not be focused on only having nice hair. Braiding hair. Nice clothes. They are good, but let it not be what you focus on adorning. Because remember, the same God looked at Solomon and told him, I will make you so beautiful. I will dress you so well. Then the same God says to us, he's saying, even Solomon with all his glory will not look like Prophet Lovi. Amen. Amen. Look at your jealousy. Amen. <laughs> I know it's scripture. He said that he will dress you way more than Solomon. God said that. So we know God is not against you looking nice. Our God wants you to be extra looking good. Amen. How can you represent the king and you look? Amen. Why, why would anyone be attracted to your God? Amen. I, I, are you listening to that? Yes. yes. There are people if they come and tell you, you need to receive Jesus. They smell your cologne. They look, they say, I need him. Amen. <laughs> this is true. I don't want to live in the mountains under a tree until the coming of Jesus. No, that's not what I want. God wants us to have life and life what? More abundantly. Amen. That is the desire of God. Amen. You dress nice, you look nice, you feel good, everything feels good. Let it not be of this, but now verse 4, listen to this. Verse 4. Verse 4, Musa. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> May God bless you. <laughs> but let it be the hidden man of the heart. Ah, there is a hidden man inside that needs to be clothed. Yes. Amen. Don't just go to the gym externally. Uh -huh. Make sure the guy inside is also gymming. Ooh. Come on. Your spirit man is also gymming. Amen. Your inner man is also strengthened. Yes. Your inner man is also having abs and all these things. Yes. You see, many of you don't understand why we whoop demons in this house. Amen. Why we can see spiritually. It is because the Gucci is a small reflection of the inward adorning. Yes. Amen. It is a small reflection of what is inside. That is why I just do me. Hallelujah. Mm, I wish somebody could hear me. Thank you. Daddy, please tell them again. Authentically you. Amen. Amen. There is something that happens inside. Once that place starts being adorning, there is something that changes. Do you realize that if you have peace... You can wear flip-flops 
and you will still look like you're putting on billion dollar clothes. Yes. I will see. Because the inward adorning yes. starts taking over the outward adorning. Yes. Amen. Amen. You can wear a simple t-shirt, jeans yes. and flip-flops and you're walking about and everybody will turn and say, who's that? Amen. Who, who's that? Yes. And there are people who will overdress, I call it overdressing. They will try to put on the best pieces together and you look at them and you just see darkness. I don't know if it is prophetic eyes. You just see them dark. They are trying to flex their things, but it just looks cheap, even though it may be expensive. It just doesn't make sense. Why? The inward adorning has not happened. So the external cannot shine because the light shines from within. If you're not shining internally, you cannot shine externally. Hallelujah. For you to shine externally, you must what? Shine internally. internally. That's good. When you carry peace, ah, yes. Teach. you even smile different. Yeah. <laughs> you are waving is... <laughs> You're not worried about anything. There is a fulfillment within you. Yes. When the inward adorning is there, you may suffer for a little bit, but you will feel like you are king. And you know for a fact that in a little bit, what is inside yes. shall be manifested externally. Yes. Yes. Amen. People may not know right now where yes. you're going, yes. but you know because you are experiencing it. Amen. That when that time comes, when God brings it outside. Yes. Yes. Ah. Yes. It will be not a surprise to you. Yes. Mm. See for two seconds. You know, I, I have six minutes. You know, every time, I remember, I remember when uh, uh, one, one time uh, JT came and asked me, said, so Papa, how you feel about us having this? And I said, you know what? I even forgot about it. I'm already thinking about the next thing. Because once God shows you something, you attain it. You don't stay there. For some reason, he pulls your attraction to something bigger. So you no longer see this. You appreciate it, you love it, but... And you are not, you are not, uh, uh, what is it called? You are not also attached. You know, the, the, you are not attached. You love it, you care for it. But you know there is so much more and it is not a surprise to you. Everybody else will be surprised, but to you... It's, it's, thank you. You are just calm. It's just normal. That excitement of... It is not there. Once in a while, you remember where God brought you from. You get on your knees. You say, Father, you are worthy. Amen. But you're not surprised of what he's doing. Hallelujah. 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 Let, let, let me continue with my verse. Five minutes. JT is already looking at me. I can feel his eyes. Let's go back. I didn't finish verse 4. Musa, what is the rush? Jesus Christ. I only read one line. Huh? Oh, who is it? Andrew is defending. He's saying it's not Musa. <laughs> it's okay. Whoever is not Musa, be patient. <laughs> ah, you are, you are a good advocate. He was like, it's not Musa. <laughs> Uh, you have been saved, whoever you are. <laughs> but let it be the hidden man of the heart. In that which is no what? Corruptible. Even the ornament of a meek and quiet spirit. Which is in the sight of God of great price. Your value to God is your ability to be calm. Because anyone that does not possess a calm spirit is a public danger, will make hasty decisions, and will miss everything that God has for them. Amen. Even though they pray in tongues, even though they fast and pray, yeah. even though they give tithes and offerings, this is why the Bible says it like this. 
Anyone that can manage and control their spirit is more powerful than a man who can possess or capture a whole city. A person that can capture a city is not as powerful as a man that can manage their inner man to adorn him and to make him calm. That's so good. You see, you can be irritated in your soul. This one is usually circumstantial. Every second deep breath. <sighs> your soul is unable to manage situations. Sometimes it happens to me, I'll sit down and I'll be like, especially when Christian went home, ah, this was the t I've never felt this before. But God helped me. You know, I, you, you sit and you feel that, okay, you breathe and you calm down. But that's in the soul. There are people who have a hasty spirit. You think they're basketball players. You can hear the squeaking. <laughs> there is no calm enough. There is no patience. There is no calm. There is no patience. The ability to sit down and say, you know what? Things are tough, but let me wait on the Lord. Let me stay calm. You see, 90% of the things you will do towards God is born from your spirit. That is why the Bible says a broken spirit dries up what? The bones. If your spirit can be afflicted, everything in your life can't move. It doesn't matter if your soul is rapper, kappa. Ah, I'm reading the word. You praise dance. And then somebody after that will ask you, how are you doing? You know, trusting God. That means I'm not doing well. I am suffering. And I don't know if help is coming. Now let's be honest. You meet somebody, you say, I, I, how are you doing? Blessed and highly favored. Then you just experiment. How are you really doing? The blessed and highly favored will not be the answer. <laughs> it will be something else. You know, you know, it's been really tough, you know. A lot of things have just been tough. So you realize that their declaration was fake. Every time somebody came to Job, how are you doing? Blessed and highly favored. He's sick. How are you doing? Blessed and highly favored. I, cast God and die. No, I'm blessed and highly favored. Amen. You lost everything. I'm blessed and highly favored. There was something inside of him. Yes. Yes. That he understood that his affliction is for a short time. Yes. His inward adorning sustained him. Yes. Amen. And kept him. So that when God brings that attraction. They know how to manage themselves to get to where they're supposed to get to. Some of you. Tried to marry people you are attracted to. Not understanding maybe they were just supposed to contribute something in your destiny. You rejected love for attraction, yet attraction was just a destiny path. But because there was no adorning of the inward man, you translated it and interpreted it to be that is the love of your life. I just stepped on some toes, huh? Teaching good. You're teaching so good. Somebody's foot, no toes, huh? Somebody's delivered, right? Yeah. Amen. 100%. <laughs> One year, I am believing God. Two years, I'm believing God. 
Three years, I'm trusting God. Five years, I'm waiting on God. Ten years, ah. The person has multiplied. <laughs> but it is because it is not that your pulling was wrong. The pulling was correct, but what was the purpose? If the adorning of the inward man is off, then everything that God pulls you towards, you will interpret it based on what you're missing. Not based on your assignment. I thought somebody would clap their hands because God is speaking to somebody. That's good. Is somebody really listening to me? Yes. Are you sure you can hear me for real? Yes. You may mistake it for what it is not. Because the deep calleth unto what? Deep. What does that mean? What was put inside of you by God will always be a magnet that will invoke your spirit. What God planted inside of you will always be pulled by the destiny like a magnet. Amen. This is why your inward and dawning needs to be good because if it is good, then if it is a pulling of the soul, then you know it is carnal. Yes. You'll be able to tell what is pulling my spirit and what is pulling my soul. If it is pulling my soul, is it coming from my needs? Is it coming from my fears? If it is pulling my spirit... Ah, this one is destiny. What is the mission behind it? If these things are not in place, you will do what is called insanity, not the workout. <laughs> Doing the same thing, hoping for a different in, uh, result. You find yourself in the realm of insanity. And not the workout. <laughs> God is calling you and is calling me to a place of the renewal of the spirit and of purpose that we can be sober to know what, it, what God is pulling us to. Some of you, you are pulled to entertainment not because it is your passion you see when it is a pulling it's not even passion that's just what you do you just don't even know how to do anything else it just pulls you you are trying to shake it off you try to go to school do, but this thing keeps calling you KB KB you say uh uh KB, then you stretch your hands. Gabriella. <laughs> Before you know it, it takes you. When God called me, I did everything to avoid it. Since my childhood, I'm seeing visions, I'm doing all these things. Ah, it was not something that I actually wanted to do. I love the Lord with all my heart. I, have, I don't know what he did to me because I can't take credit for it. I have always... My affection has always been on God, 100%. Unwavering, unshakable, it has always been to God. I can error, I can miss it, but my affection has always been on God. Even my own siblings, they, can, they never understood it. I used to be that kid that would get in trouble for being in church too much. Because anywhere I could serve, I served. I would leave for church at 6.30 in the morning. I would be back at 6. And they would be like, why did you stay so late and you know you have school tomorrow? My brother Richie will punish me. You need to stop this next week. I'm back doing the same exact thing. Until they got tired, they just understood this is where this... But even me, I couldn't tell you why I was there. And when I was there, I would ask, what can I do? Do you need me 
to clean? Do you need me to play drums? I was never looking for a position. I was looking for a way to serve. Because when I was there, there was a fulfillment that came within me. Amen. Amen. Me and my brother Christian are, are, have blown up musically in East Africa. Touring, going places. I'll, we'll travel and go on tour and everything. But every Sunday morning if we were in the city, they knew to find me in church playing drums. Until my own uncle said, you know now you are too big for you to be doing this. I said, Papa, this is where my heart is. All over in church. Not just to sit on the floor crying to God. If I did anything, I took it to church before it was released. Why? There was a pulling. I didn't even understand how great the purpose was, but it was something within. Even my own brothers would be like, okay, this, uh, today I'm, I'm, I'm not, nah, me, it will pull me. It is not like I saw some powerful man of God and I say, yeah, that looks cool. No. It was something within that pulled. What is pulling you? What is pulling you? You need to ask yourself this. Are your these temporary desires of... I need money, I need this, I need that. Clouding your judgment not to see your destiny. Or is your destiny so big that when you are pulled, you consider things after the flesh, it discourages you to go. You need to know where you are because you see, destiny is heavy. On the shoulders, it is heavy. Sometimes it can feel like an elephant is sitting on your chest. Because the purpose is so big. Sometimes you don't even know how to start, but the pulling will always direct you to where you need to begin. Amen. Uh, somebody Amen. missed what I said. If your pulling is dull, you will not know where to begin because that pulling will just bring you somewhere. It will just pull you somewhere. I know uh, uh, Mr. Benjamin can attest to this. I am one of the most determined people ever in this life. When I had come and, and my green card and my, and my visa stuff was not all put together, this is years ago. Everyone was telling me, you can't get this, you can't do this, you can't intern. I still did it. Because once you are pulled, and it has something to do with your destiny, yes. no excuse will hold you. Amen. No sickness will hold you. Amen. Nothing in your life will hold you yeah. from receiving what God has ordained for you. I want you to stand and I want you to pray. Many of you, you're crying because of your needs, but your prayer has never been to cry for your destiny. Yeah. Father, bless me. <laughs> God, open my doors, but the blessing is where the destiny is. If you're not going where destiny is, how will you be blessed? Because your blessing is where destiny is. Blessing should not have sorrow. You can make seven figures and you are man and woman of sorrow. It means that's not a blessing. Money can buy you a bed, but it will never buy you sleep. Money can get you the best doctors, but it can't buy you health. Amen. Money can't buy a peace of mind. Yes. Money can't buy a good marriage. Money can't buy a relationship with God. As much as we need money, it is not the most important thing. 
It is simply a tool God has given us in order to fulfill purpose using it. It is like a car you get in, you start and it drives somewhere. But it is not the main focus. When you are in destiny and in purpose, money will look for you. Amen. I, I feel like I'm talking to myself. We're here. When you are in destiny and you are in purpose, money will hunt for you. It will look for your address and it will find you. Amen. Have you ever asked yourself why rich people get richer? It is because they have gotten to a place where resources are coming. They are coming by themselves. They are no longer fighting for it. Opportunities to even make more. Now it is no longer about being broke. It's just winning. Why? Because they carry something that can fulfill another's purpose. If somebody takes... Let me just use a, a, a simple example. If Versace right now comes and takes you to take a picture with their color, no one will buy it. It doesn't matter how good you look. You may be looking like an angel that fell from heaven. Nobody is going to buy it. But give it to Kanye. Let him just be in a picture that it's there. Everybody will buy it. They have reached such a place that they can fulfill other people's destinies. That's why when, when, when you go into agencies or in movies or, or even in any sector of work, they don't just look at your qualification. They look for the it thing that they can't explain. Those as, I don't know. They are not really qualified, but they have that thing. My prayer for you all this morning is stop just praying for your needs. Your needs will be met when you're in purpose. When you're in purpose, there is no way you'll be lacking. Yes. Amen. Amen. I have never seen the righteous forsaken yes. or their seed beg for bread. Yes. Your needs will be met beyond what you can think of. But it needs you. It needs your eyes to be opened in the place of purpose. Let the pulling of your inner man, not of your emotion, not of your affection. Many times, many of you are attracted by your hobbies, not your gifting. The gift comes so naturally that many of you have undermined it. And when we are talking about gift, we are not talking about a, a spiritual gift. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We are talking about what God just gave you naturally. Yes. Amen. Some of you, you make people laugh when people didn't even... You're not even joking, you're being serious. <laughs> Somebody say, why haven't you ever acted before? Ah, that's not my thing. Right. I want to be a scientist. Ah... Uh... <laughs> One of them is sitting on drums. <laughs> uh -huh. Jason. Are, are you getting what I'm saying? Don't confuse your passion for your gifting. Amen. Your gift will make room, not your passion. Yes. You can be passionate about things that will never elevate you. Are you listening to me? Yes. So, so lift your hands to God. I really pray that you will experience this gift and ability. Amen. Ah, this gift and ability is sweet. You'll be like a chess player that already knows 10 moves before anybody. Whether those who love you, your enemies, you will see them before they come. So I, I want you to sincerely genuinely go before the Lord and tell the Lord Jesus Father 
cause me not to make decisions based on my soul. Don't let me sacrifice destiny because of my needs. Don't allow me to give up because of my temporary suffering. But by your spirit, pull me. Pull my inner man to the place of destiny. Lift up your voice and pray. Father, cause us not to pray for our needs, oh God. Cause us, Father, to pray, Father, from a place of purpose, oh God. May we know our purpose, oh God. May we strengthen our inner man, oh Father, so that we know the pull of our destiny, oh God. May I not miss my destiny, in our spirit man so that we may know our destiny Father, in the name of Jesus. Father, in the name of Jesus. Help me today, O oh Lord. Help me today, O oh Lord. Let whatever hindrance that is in my heart. Let whatever hindrance is in my heart. Lord, by your spirit, take it out of me. Lord, by your spirit, take it out of me. Those things that are hidden in me. Those things that are hidden in me. That have resisted your purpose and your will. That have resisted your purpose and your will. That has caused me to fear that has caused me to fear that has caused me to give up that has caused me to give up father deliver me father deliver me from insecurities of the future from insecurities of the future from memories of the past from memories of the past set me on the path of destiny set me on the path of destiny in the mighty name of Jesus lift up your voice and cry to God with your own words
set your right hand on your heart. Set your right hand on your heart. Every one of you. Are you here? Yes. Are you sure you're here? Yes. Say, Father, in the name of Jesus. Father, in the name, name of Jesus. Jesus. Today, O oh Lord, give me discernment. Today, O oh Lord, give me discernment. To know what is spiritual. To know what is spiritual. And to know what is of the soul. And to know what is of the soul. Father, in the name of Jesus. Father, in the name of Jesus. Give me the spirit of discernment. Give me the spirit of discernment. That I may know what is of the soul. That I may know what is of the soul. And what is of the spirit. And what is of the spirit. Lord, I do not want to miss my destiny. Lord, I do not want to miss my destiny. I do not want to miss the reason you put me on the earth. I do, I do not, not want to miss, miss the reason, reason you put me on the Father, earth. grace me with the spirit of discernment. Father, grace me with the spirit of discernment. Lift up your voice and ask God for discernment. Father, Father Provonte Gida Agradiga Alamasota Regonde le Berebe Saturia Masata Repatalose Rofate Liga Antre Gida Asote Amasata Rezazo Zeza Kazika Azuga Mekara Daba Shuka Radeba Hase Rondo Bobo Bobo Bosita La Barabashaya Recada Badaba Suta Recada Badaba Suta Mokro do vosete, frevanto liga a prevetea, zipro de liga a masto teleba suta, zigonde le gedebe suta la bara de gase, recada baba baba basuta le bahate, repata la basuta la bara basica, reta la masute le besata, recada baba baba basica, repata la basoto lo bosica da baya. Lift your, lift your voice, lift your voice, lift your voice. Jesus name. In Jesus name the Spirit of the Lord is ministering to me Amen. Amen. and the Lord is genuinely speaking to me many of you unforgiveness is keeping you from your destiny unforgiveness is keeping you from your destiny you see when the moment unforgiveness manifests Pride is the next thing. Because anyone who cannot forgive is prideful. And anywhere where there is pride, there is unforgiveness. And God opposes the proud. But when you learn to look to God and you say, You know what, Lord? No one is worth sacrificing my destiny for. Amen. Amen. Uh, I wish you could hear me. Some of you need to forgive yourselves. Some of you need to forgive your parents. Some of you need to forgive your neighbor, your ex, 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 triple X, four X's, whatever the X numbers are. You need to let go of some people. They are not worth sacrificing what God has for you. No one is worth that. Imagine the purpose you are born and you're going to forsake it. Because somebody offended you. Amen. It is crazy. Yeah. Or to abandon your destiny simply because of misunderstanding. It is an error. Can somebody hear me? Yes. It is a mistake. 
It is the biggest mistake and there is no sin that God hates more than unforgiveness. Because if God saw it fit to forgive us, do you know what level of pride you master when you stand before God and you say, they hurt me. God is like, ah, don't you know you are a candidate of hell? And I afflicted my son for you and you cannot forgive. Okay. Let's see how far that takes you. Can you hear me? Pray. And begin to forgive people. I'll give you 40 seconds to let go of every Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednegros. All of them, let them go. Listen to me. Let them go. If you want to see the manifestation of what God has spoken today in your marriage, in your family, in your children, in your destiny, let them go. If you will not let them go, you'll be sacrificing a sweet life, a beautiful life, a fulfilling life in the sight of God. Simply because of holding on to somebody, you shouldn't. It's too big of a burden. Lift up your voice and speak to God. Father, I forgive, Father. Pray and forgive people. Jesus, Father. Anyone, Father, that I was offended by, I forgive them, Father. I release, Father. I release everyone, Father, from the heart, Father, that I was offended by. Jesus name. Jesus name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lift both hands up. Lift both hands up. Look to the Lord Jesus. Lift your hands up to heaven. There's something that God is going to release on you. Hallelujah. Even those who are on stage, lift your hands to heaven. Every single person, whether you're in the overflow or in here, Lift your hands to heaven. There will be an awakening of your spirit like never before. Amen. Amen. Now, maybe you didn't hear me. Amen. Sing. I said your, your inner man Amen. Sing. will be revived and awakened. See That when the pool comes... You already understand the laws of attraction now. You know how to engage when God pulls you. Yes. I want to pray that your inner man will be activated beyond where your thoughts were, your failures were. I want God to pull your spirit up. Just like Elisha prayed and said, Father, open the eyes of the young man. We can pray for you and God can pull your spirit up. Amen. Amen. 
Lift your hands to him. Le kora masika televons te enkre de behaya. Loria masote le bradiga asonte le bradusha ake. Frevente le de dedia asuta maradosh. Frokonste engla asuta le prado vesete. Moria masuke le maasto ondra de vetea. Librova liga aso one maane me eto le kobaya te. Le baya asuta la bradega asu perebe shaya. Regonza diga ale katosha e perebe eto. Vrakuze meletisha. Rumia asute le baato le barutia amasate. Korama sikate le basuta. Remonsta ika parate lia. Revonza diga amarate le besuta. Roka pala de 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 besuta la bradegida ante le bahaya. Merciful Father, you are God alone. There is no other God apart from you. You created man to be primarily spirit. And by man being spirit, they can never miss the leading of your spirit. Your word says those who are led by the spirit. Your word is declaring that those who are led by their inner man. Not those who have the Holy Spirit, but those who are led by their spirit. Father, I decree and declare, may this word be fulfilled to every single one that can hear my voice. Those who are in here, those who are at home, those who are watching on YouTube or, or any other way that they are watching. Father, I pray in the name of Jesus. As the angel of the Lord touched Daniel and Daniel received strength. The same way the angels of the Lord touched your son Jesus and strengthened him. Let heaven be opened. And let there be a touch on everybody that is in here. That their weaknesses will fall. Their shortcomings will fall. Where they were tired, those chains will be broken. My Lord and my God. By your mighty hand. As you touch them, let depression, oppression. Let these things fall from them. Let clarity be their portion. Let clarity understanding, wisdom, knowledge of the Spirit, be their compass. Lift your hands up. Lift your hands up. Don't look at anybody. I see them ready to touch you. In the mighty name of Jesus, let their spirits be activated. In the mighty name of Jesus, in the mighty name of Jesus, where there was blindness, let it be removed. Where there is a captive, let them be delivered. In the mighty name of Jesus, in the mighty name of Jesus. 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 Let their inner man be touched. Reka kaka bahaya. Reka kaka kabahaya. Ezoka palagida akarabasho. Zekadabadaba suta. Their inner man be touched. Strength in the inner man. Let a fire begin to burn from within. Hey! 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 Let a realm of tongues, a realm of prayer, a realm of 
bullying that they have never known before be activated in the name of Jesus. Zekadiga atoria masataba. Ribondelekesa tabayatika. Rebatulia masote. Rikada bahazote le makuri abasata. Eka la basuta. Light be, light be, light be. 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 Let every darkness depart. Light be, light be, light be, light be. Ezoka parata zekadabada basuta mentro de kita aka ze paradiga aso rekati la ma aso teleba haya lift them 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 Snatch them from the enemy. Snatch them from the enemy. Snatch them from the enemy. Hey! Recapala diga aso. Repara diga aso. Repara digaso. Repara digaso. Wickedness has no place in you. Yes. Yes. Rode Bahazuta, Vrevede de Besuta La Bayata. Let the cloud sit on them. Let the cloud sit on them. Let the cloud of your presence sit on them. Elevate them, Lord. Let them change levels and dimensions. Let them change levels and dimensions in their callings, in their ministries. Let them change levels and dimensions. Ore masuta le koria masete. Kora ba 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 basika da bashota. Recondele Behazuti Amakosia Blow on them like the wind, Lord. Blow on them like the wind, Lord. In the mighty name of Jesus. Close your eyes. Don't look at people. Say, Father, thank you for touching my inner man. Father, thank, thank you, you for, for touching, touching my inner man. In Jesus' name. Jesus name. Clap for the Lord Jesus. Listen to me and listen to me by the Spirit of God. Don't sacrifice where you're going because of offense, somebody offending you, somebody talking about you. Don't allow bitterness to cloud your judgment. Let God pull you by your inner man. 
if there is so much piled up inside of you, when the Lord brings that pool, you will not be able to discern it. You may even miss it. And God will not be able to fulfill what he desires with your life. And if God cannot use you, then your life has no value. Value to life is being useful in God's hands. If Jesus can do something with you, you are of great value. Because value is not what you determine. It is who is going to buy that determines the value. So Jesus bought you with such a great price and set such a value on you that he can fulfill what he desires. He saw you perfect to carry out his will and his desire. This week will be a week of tremendous testimonies. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.